In this video, we're going to talk about capacitors, particularly when they're charging and discharging. So let's say if we have an RC circuit, that is a circuit containing a capacitor with a resistor, and we're going to have an open switch initially. Let's say that the voltage of the battery is 12 volts. This is the resistor R, and here we have the capacitor represented by the symbol C. Now, once the switch is closed, charge will begin to flow. Current will flow from the positive terminal of the battery to charge the capacitor. The longer side is the positive terminal. Now, keep in mind though, electrons, they flow in the opposite direction. Electrons flow from the negative terminal and it enters the positive terminal. Now initially, when the switch is open, the voltage of the capacitor will be zero. As soon as the switch is closed, when T is zero, the voltage will still be zero, but the voltage across the resistor initially will equal the voltage of the battery, which is 12. Now after some significant time has passed, the capacitor will be fully charged. Let's call it V final. It's going to have a final voltage of 12. When the capacitor is fully charged, the voltage across the resistance is going to be zero. The reason being is once you once the capacitor is fully charged, no current will flow in the circuit. And if there's no current flowing through the resistor, the voltage across that resistor will be zero. So initially, when a capacitor has a voltage of zero, the voltage of the resistor will be 12 because it has to add up to the battery's voltage. When the capacitor is fully charged to 12 volts, the voltage across the resistor will be zero because at that point, there's no current flowing through the circuit. And keep in mind, no current actually passes through the capacitor. The current that flows through the circuit is simply used to pump charge from one plate of the capacitor to the other plate. The equation that describes a capacitor charging is this equation. It's equal to the EMF of the battery, which in this problem is 12, times 1 minus E. E is basically the inverse of the natural log function, minus the time divided by RC. Now the graph looks something like this. This is the EMF of the battery, which is 12 volts. And the capacitor will charge progressively towards 12 volts. But it starts from zero. And so depending on the resistance and the value of the capacitance, it will affect the shape of this graph. But for the most part, that's how it's going to look like. It's going to increase towards 12, at which point it's just going to be a horizontal line. So this is the voltage of the capacitor and on the x-axis you have the time. Now there's something called tau which is the time constant and that's equal to the product of the resistance and the capacitance. It's RC. And so it has units ohms times farads. Now let's talk about the time constant. Let's make a table. This is going to be the voltage at any time t. That is the voltage of the capacitor. So how much will the capacitor be charged after one time constant? One time constant is basically, it's equal to uh, one RC. Two time constants is just two RC. So what you need to do is replace T with 1RC in the equation. And RC will cancel, so basically, you just got to plug in 1, e to the minus 1. If you type that in, you should get 0.632, which is 63.2%.
Now, the maximum voltage of the capacitor is the voltage of the battery, which is 12. 63.2% of 12 is 7.58 volts. So after one time constant, the voltage of the capacitor will be 7.58 volts. The 63.2% of its maximum. Now, what about after two time constants? Well, if you type in 1 minus e to the negative 2, you should see 0.865 or 86.5%. 86.5% of 12 is 10.38. So after two time constants, the voltage of the capacitor will be 10.38. Now, 1 minus E to the minus 3 will give you 0.95, or 95%, which correlates to a voltage of 11.4 volts. After four time constants, the capacitor will be 98.2% charged. And after five constants, it's going to be 99.3% charge. It's going to have a voltage of 11.92. So it takes about five time constants for a capacitor to be fully charged. It's about 99% charge at that point. Now what about discharging a capacitor? Let's say if the capacitor is fully charged, and we connect it across the resistor. Now let's say it now has a voltage of 12 volts. What type of graph will we have? When a capacitor is discharging, the graph will look like this. It's going to start from its initial value of 12, and it's going to progressively decrease to 0. The equation that describes this graph is this one, V is equal to V initial, that's the original voltage of the capacitor, when T is 0, that's 12 volts, times E raised to the negative T over RC. Now let's make another table. V of C is the voltage of the capacitor, and on the x-axis we have time. Now, after one time constant, how much, what percentage of the charge does the capacitor still have? So notice this equation. If we replace T with negative RC, this is going to be E to the negative 1. If you type in E to the negative 1, you're going to get 0.368, or it's going to be 36.8% charged. The voltage is now 4.42 volts. That's 36.8% of 12. After two time constants, it's going to be 13.5%. In the other table, after two time constants, it was 86.5%. These two numbers have to add up to 100. So the voltage at this point is going to be 1.62 volts. After three time constants, it's going to be 5% charged, 95% discharged. So its voltage is now going to be 0.6 volts. After four time constants, it's going to have 1.8% of its initial charge. So the voltage is going to be 0.22. So it takes about five time constants for the capacitor to be 99% discharge, where it's going to have 0.7% remaining of its original charge. And so the voltage is going to be 0 0.08. So at that point, we could say that the capacitor, for the most part, is discharged. Now let's work on an example problem. So let's say we have an RC circuit, and the capacitor is attached to the battery by means of a resistor. And initially, at t equals 0, let's say the voltage of the capacitor is 0. And the capacitor is going to have a value of 500 microfarads. And let's say that the resistor, it's a 1 uh, kilo ohm resistor. And the voltage of the battery is going to be 20 volts. 
with this information, how long will it take for the capacitor to reach 90% of its uh, maximum charge? So what is 90% of 20 volts? 20 times 90% is 18 volts. So we want to know how long will it take for the capacitor to be 90% charge or to reach a voltage of 18 volts. Since the capacitor is charging, we can use this equation. V is the voltage of the capacitor, which is 18 volts. The EMF of the battery is 20. And let's find out the value of RC, which is one time constant. R is one kilo ohm, which is a thousand ohms. C is 500 microfarads, which is 500 times 10 to the minus six farads. Now, if we multiply these two, 1,000 times 500 times 10 to the minus 6, this is equal to 0 0.5. 0 0.5 is the value of one time constant. So a time constant is 0.5 seconds in this particular problem. Because sometimes you may need to know uh, what the time constants are. So let's replace RC with 0 0.5. And now our goal is to solve for T. So the first thing we need to do is divide both sides by 18. I mean, rather by 20. 18 divided by 20 is 0.9. So 0.9 is equal to 1 minus E raised to the negative T divided by 0.5. Next, subtract both sides by 1. 0.9 minus 1 is negative 0.1. So we have negative 0.1 minus e raised to the negative t divided by 0.5. Next, multiply both sides by negative 1. This will change the negative signs into a positive sign. After that, let's take the natural log of both sides. So on the left, we have the natural log of 0.1, and on the right, we have the natural log of e to the negative t divided by 0.5. Now, a property of logs allows you to take the exponent and move it to the front. So therefore, what we now have is the natural log of 0.1 is equal to negative t divided by 0.5 times ln e. ln e is equal to 1. Now let's just get rid of this stuff. Now let's multiply both sides by negative 0.5. This will cancel the 0.5 on the right as well as the negative sign. So t is equal to negative 0.5 times the natural log of 0.1. So if we type this in, This will give us 1.15 seconds. So that's the time it takes for the capacitor to reach 90% of its maximum value, to reach a voltage of 18 volts. Now, is there an equation that can help us get this answer a lot faster? If you rearrange the equation, you can use this formula. T is equal to a negative RC times the natural log. of 1 minus V divided by E, where V is the voltage of the capacitor at any time T, and this uh, epsilon symbol is basically the voltage of the battery. Now the way you should type it in should be like this. R, make sure you use 1000, don't use 1 kilo ohm. C is going to be 500 times 10 to the minus 6 and then multiply that by the natural log of 1 minus 18 volts divided by 20. 
if you type this in exactly the way you see it, and this is a multiplication sign, this will give you 1.15 seconds. So we have the time, and we also have the time constant. As we said before, one time constant is equal to RC, which is 0.5 seconds. So using this information, how many time constants does it take for the capacitor to be 90% charged? How can we figure this out? To find the number of time constants, convert it. Start with the time that you have, which is 1.15 seconds over 1. And we know that one time constant is equivalent to 0.5 seconds. So notice that the unit seconds will cancel, giving us the number of time constants. So anytime you have to find the number of time constants, which is we'll call it n, it's equal to the time divided by tau. That's how you can find it. So it's 1.15 divided by 0.5. And so it takes about 2.3 time constants for the capacitor to be 90% charge. Now, does this answer make sense? Consider the first table that we went over early in this video. We said that it takes two time constants for the capacitor to be 86.5% charged, and that it takes three time constants for the capacitor to be 95% charged. So therefore, 90% is between 86.5% and 90, which means that it should take somewhere between 2 and 3 time constants to be 90% charged. And 2.3 is between 2 and 3. So that answer does indeed make sense. And so now you know how to find the number of time constants it takes to charge or even discharge a capacitor to a certain level. And so we're going to stop here. So that's it for this video. Thanks for watching and have a great day.